Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back better than ever. This is another edition here of the Brilliantly Dumb Show, Big Game Bob, coming to you live on your local airways. We are live here, um, not live, but we are here from Jupiter, Florida, a uh, beautiful, beautiful place out here, the golf capital of the world, um, and really a place that makes me realize I am very much looking forward to retirement, which is pretty much my life right now, is pretty much retirement, which is a beautiful thing. I'm thrilled to be here. Hope you're thrilled to be listening. A lot of buzz, a lot of movement behind the Brilliant Dumb Show. It's a very fun time for the Brilliant Dumb Show right now. Numbers are moving. Is the needle moving because of Mikey Beardown cousin, Joey Coldcuts, who will be joining us on the show shortly? Um, I don't know but we are going to keep hammering away. Um, the feedback has been phenomenal. So thank you guys for that. Just spectacular, spectacular stuff. For those of you watching on the YouTube right now, you probably see that's a young man in his element right now. We got the brilliantly dumb Bob does sports bucket hat bagel with locks uh, golf polo on getting ready to go play golf for Bob does sports. We are filming an episode. Um, I'm playing a 14 year old girl. Who's a, a junior golf champion. 1v1, she's probably going to smoke me, but nonetheless, I think it'll be phenomenal content. But it's time, without further ado, to jump on into our buy and sell segment of the week before we send it over to Bear Down Cuz and Joey Coldcuts. Um, what, what did we see this week that we liked? What did we not like? Where are we buying our stock? Is it food? Is it a certain restaurant? Is it a certain athlete? Whatever it is, buy or sell segment of the week. Again, keep firing yours over to me. I love seeing them um, right out of the gate, coming right off the Christmas holiday. Um, I am going to buy something. I'm going to start off. I'm going to buy the charcuterie board. Um, I think the charcuterie board completely sets the tone for the dinner that you're having, the party that you're having. There's so many different combinations you could use with the charcuterie board. Sometimes you have some honey slide in on the side of a charcuterie board. You could dip your nuts and your meat and your cheese into the honey all different assortments. Everybody's got their own twist on the charcuterie board. I think charcuterie boards are spectacular. They pair phenomenal with wine. And again, what I love most, it just totally sets the tone of the meal. Lately, if I see a charcuterie board on a menu, I'm hitting it every single time. Buy your stock in the charcuterie board that's really making its way back into menus, back in the restaurants. Love to see it by the stock there. Um, something that I am going to sell. The Starbucks drive through is something that I want to sell. Some places, ladies and gentlemen, were just not built to be a drive through Just not them. Whether it's their business model, whether it's the product that they're slinging out, I don't think it's fair to the baristas to have the drive through It's always at least 20 minute wait, at least the minimum at a Starbucks drive through And if Starbucks wants to start taking their drive through seriously, I think they need to talk to the Chick-fil-A's of the world and see how do you guys run your drive through What's the secret to success of the Starbucks drive through It seems great. The idea of it seems phenomenal. It's always packed. It always backs up traffic. And I think that's something Starbucks might have to do is consider the two lane drive through where you have two intercoms, two mics going at once totally, totally helps out with traffic and the flow of things. I just don't think it's fair to these baristas who now have traffic coming from two ends. Um, I, I, I am selling the Starbucks drive through for the people that do walk into the restaurant parking when they go to back out. They're always affected on their reverse by people who are there in the drive through always a mess. If Starbucks wants to start taking their drive through seriously, give a call to Chick-fil-A. Lord knows the Starbucks CEO knows the Chick-fil-A CEO or somebody, maybe CFO, start taking it seriously. I am selling the Starbucks drive through and then something that I want to buy. Um, I am buying stock in the game of pickleball. I mean, you talk about a game and, and maybe I'm saying this because I'm in Jupiter, Florida, and I know a lot of people consider it a retirement game, which yes, to a degree it is. Pickleball is unbelievable. If you like tennis, give pickleball a go. There's not nearly as much downtime. It's back and forth, nonstop action. You know, with tennis, you got to wait for somebody to get it in. They get two serves to get it in. 
pickleball is just nonstop. It's a phenomenal workout, an incredible game. The way that I describe pickleball is it's like ping pong on steroids. It's, it's phenomenal. And yes, I understand it's a bit of an old man's game, but I will do everything in my power to make pickleball a young man's sport. The same way that golf was an old man's game, now it's a young man's game as well. I, I love pickleball. I think it's phenomenal. Um, I'm addicted, and I'm telling you, it's taken over more and more country clubs. It's taken over more and more recreation centers. You heard it here first on the Brilliant Dumb Show. Buy your stock in pickleball and buy it right now. Get yourself a pickleball ball. Get yourself a racket. Find the course and have at it. Mark my words. Bob told you here first. Um, and then something else that we're going to buy to close off our buy and sell segment here. Um, buy your stock in pops. My dad, um, again, I've been in Jupiter, Florida. Mike Berger right now, I did an Instagram, built an Instagram for him and started popping up on there. 1,500 followers in two days. Um, he's a content machine. He's like Larry David's brother. It's like every day I spend with him is a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode live in real life that I'm witnessing and now all my followers are listening. If you don't believe me, and if you're not on the Mike Berger bandwagon, and I know you could say I'm being biased here, but I'm watching what's going on. Um, I think we're going to start putting out a lot of Mike Berger content. I think he is a gold mine, and he doesn't even know it, which makes it so great. He doesn't understand why people find his stuff funny. Um, I think it's hysterical. Jet, before we go into our Bear Down Cousin Joey Cold Cut segment, um, can you go ahead up and fire uh, maybe two years ago? He called Skinny Cow Ice Cream Company, um, and it, it's, it just shows you how Larry David he is. He called Skinny Cow Ice Cream Company because he got an assortment pack, and usually he gets three vanilla, three chocolate, and he called customer service to try and understand why he was given four chocolate and two vanilla instead of three vanilla and three chocolate. Uh, we're going to play that clip. And before we go into the segment, buy your stock in Mike Berger. We're going to keep posting to his Instagram account. I think it's Michael Berger 369, just the absolute electric factory. He doesn't even know it um, again, which is the beauty of it all. Jed, if we could go ahead and, and, and roll that clip off and then we will head on over um, to our prize picks segment. It says assorted. Hi, Ivana. My name is Mike Berger. How are you? Okay, I got an, uh, a question for you. I just opened up a skinny cow vanilla and chocolate ice cream uh, sandwich, which I buy a lot of. And I got, <laughs> I got four vanilla and two chocolate instead of three vanilla and three chocolate. Yeah, I mean, normally when I open these up, it's three vanilla and three chocolate. It's, it's an assorted pack. But this time I got four vanilla and two chocolate. Is that, is that unusual? I mean, if, if that's not Larry David, I, I don't know what is. That is Mike Berger in a nutshell, my dad. Um, and for as long as I'm in Jupiter, which will be till Thursday, just going to keep firing out Mike Berger content all day long. People are loving it. I'm loving it. Um, and another thing people are loving is Mikey Bear Down Cuz, Joey Cold Cuts. We are going to be doing our prize pick segment with them, shoot the shit with them, and then close down with the Ass Bob segment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling here. On the Brilliantly Dumb Show, let's head on over to the fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the Brilliantly Dumb Show to let you know that this episode of the Brilliantly Dumb Show is brought to you by our favorite producer of ball trimmers, Manscaped. Who else would it be? I don't know. 2022 is on its way, and the last thing you want is to be the guy with pubes getting in your way of making this year your best year yet. 2021 sucked, and that's why Manscaped is making a splash and upping your grooming game. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you time and time again, I will continue to tell you, Manscaped is the cream of the crop, the straw that serves the drink, and most importantly, the company that protects your ball sack, protects your nuts the right way, the only way. 
today. Use code 20 Bobby. That's two zero Bobby for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and protect your nuts today. Again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code 20 Bobby at manscaped.com. Don't waste any time. Get your manscape today. Treat your nutsack the right way. The only way with manscaped. Gentlemen, 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 Sir Joseph Peter DeMar, Mikey V, also known as Mikey Bear Down Cuz. We have Joey Coldcuts coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. He is home back into the motherland and then in the Chicago Bear hoodie alongside the Bear Down Cuz signature hat. It's Sir Mikey V. Gentlemen, hello. Good evening. Late start to the recording session here. How are we doing today? Mikey, how you doing? I'm fine, Joe. Why? Why? Why the? Why the smirk? That was I mean, a smirk. Look, there was there was a smirk in there. There was just a smirk. with the hoodie. You're all bundled up. I don't know. You look you nice look and cozy. Nice. I'm nice and cozy down in the cave. Uh, Sporting a lot of Bears gear, by the way. After Big Bears W this week. Big Bears W, dramatic W. Uh, really, not a big W at all in the scheme of things. But you know, we uh, we'll still wear the gear. You know, you unfortunately, know but. Yeah, Bob, it looks like you got um looks like one of those what do you got going on behind you there? A little lantern action in case uh-huh. you get in case you know you get lost in the woods at night or something. Um checking in from the Jupiter Florida pad, uh patio at my mm. parents' house here. Um I did want to just touch on the bears for a quick sec here, bear down, because I know it's uh, tough uh. to talk about. I know, I know, but I did want to say that something <laughs> I was thinking about when I was watching the Bears game is yeah. that what's so upsetting is if your team stinks the way for me, like the Jets do, yeah. I at least can. The one bright spot is being able to root for draft picks. The mm-hmm. Bears don't have a draft pick coming twenty. Am I wrong that they don't have a draft? They don't have, pick a, first, they don't have a first round pick. Doesn't doesn't that make you sick to your stomach? To where at least no. you could kind of root for a good draft pick to where you root for them to lose. Not really, and I'll tell you why briefly. Oh. Um, because that draft pick was for Justin Fields. And I think if you took, you take a look, a good, long, hard look at this year's draft class, especially um, when you're talking about the quarterback position. Um, if you were to tell me that the bears were going to pick, you know, fifth overall, fourth overall this year, whatever uh, sixth overall, there's nobody in this year's draft quarterback wise that would have went as high as, as fields would have went. If he was in this class, like let's say fields had decided not to declare last year and he stayed at Ohio state and played this season and came out this year. If fields come out, comes out this year without Trevor Lawrence, without Zach Wilson, without Trey Lance, without these other incredible crop of rookie quarterbacks, Mac Jones uh, alongside him. I think he's, he's the number one overall pick this year, probably. If he comes out this year, he's probably the number he's probably one, one overall. So when you take a look at that and you say they gave up an 11th overall pick for him and a first rounder one and one, I got no problem with it whatsoever. Does it suck not having a first rounder? I mean, it always sucks. I mean, you know, I want one, but at the same time, like I, I'm not that short sighted where I'm not going to look at what it really is. They have, they, have a, they have a great quarterback. Do you notice how bear down before he started that? He said, you know, I'm going to touch on it briefly. He can't help himself when it no, comes I'm gonna to give the you, I'm going to give you the full answer. When, I mean, comes, I wish you would be honest. It sucks it, not having a first round. <laughs> I mean, it's like <laughs> this guy, when it comes to the Bears. Just, just say it. It's a short it's a No, I'm when not going to say that. It's it a short-sighted the, answer. I mean, listen, I could be like I could be like the Packers and just draft, you know, a a non offensive helper for Aaron Rodgers every year in the first round and make some of those bizarre choices. Yeah, that was a terrible pick. I'm not, I'm not, but, you know, but, you're deflecting here. That's not good, I'm good. not deflecting. I'm not when, deflecting. Listen, I touched on it briefly. I don't want to go into detail about it, but the man asked me a question. I'm giving the honest to God answer. But when it comes to the Chicago bears, there's nothing brief about the Chicago bears and Mikey bear down. He can't, he can't briefly. So when he said, you know, I'll touch on it briefly. I knew we were in for at least a two minute response. And had I not intervened <laughs> there, we would have got a five minute. Re- Joseph, are no, we bothering? No. Are we bothering you tonight? No, I got a lot going on, Bob. I'm sorry. I, this guy's unbelievable. I got a you lot know, going on. What, what do you have? Go, what do you have? I'm going here. On? It's I'm unbelievable. Here. We do oh, a 10 well, we're PM. Glad you're here. We do a 10 PM start for him. And yeah. he's on the phone. The By the way, entire- I hope you know that I base my entire, my entire day around this time slot. What? Yeah. 
How could you base your entire day around a 10 p.m. time slot? We did. I was good. I, I I was free all day this afternoon, and and you know, I don't have kids, so Mikey Bear Down says that the daytime didn't work for him. So I said oh. I would adjust. No, no, Bob. I'm being honest. I'm not trying to. Think that's I'm not coming fair. at Bear Down. I'm saying. No, can you let me finish? That, I'm saying I, that I was free to do it all day long. Oh. I didn't because out of respect that Mikey V has got a lot more responsibilities than I do with three, with two, well, I said three, two kids. And, and Bob, let's be honest. You're doing, you're like, it doesn't work for me. You're out playing pickleball and fucking golf all day. Okay? <laughs> so let's not, let's not point the finger. Cause there's three pointing back at you. My point is that I said, I couldn't do it during the day. Bear down said it worked better for him at night. Now I had to get COVID test. I got to still go see my friend who just had a new baby. I haven't seen him yet. So I've, I put seven o'clock on the docket, which is right in the middle of my time slot. Cause this is the most important thing I got to do. You got the new baby visit cuts. Yeah. I'm, I'm uncle it's, Joey. I got to make his, the, I got to make first, the visit. This is his first child. Second, second child. Oh, well, He's my yeah. best friend from since I was in high school. I've yet to see the kid. He was born three months ago. I I'm not going to see him for another two, three months. You know, so it's, it's, you know, and I had to take the COVID test just now because I'm fine tomorrow morning. I, so, I, I, so yeah, Bob, I'd like to, to say I'm present here. I'm, I'm present. I'm ready to go. I'd like to go out and give a shout out. Um, one of our very own Mikey Bear Down Cuz was, was, was battling the horrific disease that is COVID-19. And uh, now you see him drinking White Claws on a Tuesday <laughs> night. So he is on a Monday Battles. night. So he is back. So he is confirmed back. Yeah, and I, I said this to you, Joseph, and it's very it's it's sick of me. It's really sick of me. But when Bear Down came down with the covid, when we found out that he tested positive, I did check on Mikey V. It was the first thing that I did. I said, we're here for you. Let us know if you need anything. Yeah. I followed by calling you and said I would I would follow every single pick that Bear Down gives for the next whatever days he needed to quarantine because mm -hmm. this man is going to be in his man cave that we like to refer as the bear cave. He's going to be down there looking at bets from seven in the morning till the game time at 8 PM. Oh, no. It's exactly what happened. And he just rattled off pick after pick after pick. He was firing in the group chat. And I, I thought bear down was spectacular during COVID. I mean, yeah, for the most part, yeah, he was very, very good. I would have liked to see him spend more time in the man cave, to, to be to be honest, because when he's in the cave, he he's hitting. He was in the cave on Christmas Day. We hit four for four. It's facts, you know, I got to say. Yesterday, not, yesterday was, there was no was cave not, time yesterday. I there was will, no cave time yesterday, Bear Down, and I'm not blaming you because okay. it's a collective effort, but I'm just saying that there is a scientific fact. When Bear scientific, your scientific cave, fact is busted, cuz I uh, cuts. I wasn't in the cave on fucking Christmas Sunday or Christmas Day. I was maybe not. you were in the cave when you did the research because I tell you what, it was <laughs> iron away. And then yesterday we were we were way off yesterday. And I, you know, I know we gave the people way a off. I mean, we were we we each, each had two picks. Off. We went we one each had two, two picks, and we each went one of two. What do you want? And, the, and the two that we didn't hit were terrible. I was I, off. Off I with will, Javante Williams. The Bengals. No, Javante was terrible. Javante Williams was was something special. I, well, you I, know, I'd like I, to blame I'll, fucking Melvin Gordon for that because he's. Uh, I don't know what they see in this guy. He's terrible. But Joe, I would like there to be a time, one time, just one time. I'd love there to be a time where you make a pick. And from the start of the pick going south to the end of the game where you just say, that's a bad pick, just a bad pick, not blame this or blame that. Just one time say, you know what, guys, I dropped the ball there. I apologize. I, mean, I, I missed a lot of picks. Do you know what he did the other day? Bear down, it was amazing to me. He's all we were playing Madden. OK on playstation oh, i can't believe you're bringing this up this is bear down by the way this is about to get very ugly because we, he's about to fucking unravel of uh, a string of lies right now okay. bear down, we've let's we've, pro let's, we've, let me we've, we've probably played honest to god and joe let's be honest here we've probably played about 150 games of madden since me and him have been best friends okay, okay. and that's a hundred number. let's say a hundred that's, that's a low number go ahead Joe, I, I, I think you'd be the, the game takes half an surprised. hour at a time, Bob. We, Joe, the most we, we play off, at a we, single time is two or three games max. Two to three a session. How many sessions of Madden max. have we had? We haven't had, I mean, the last year and a half. Okay, really so, so let's say let's say 100 games, okay? Yeah. If we played 100 games, I think I've beaten them 98. Is that fair to no, say, No, that's Joe? absolutely wrong. No, I, I've counted. I've beaten you eight, eight or nine times. That is... 
so yeah, tremendously well, false. I mean, but but I'm I giving mean, you 92 out of 100, and you're saying that's so tremendously false. Yeah, but, I mean that's still that's still a pretty it's an but, incredible uh, success, percentage. Success but bear down, there, it's Bob. it's it's an incredible percentage, but it's the wrong yeah. percentage. It's not. I promise you. No, but, it's not. But I've beaten you at the, least six six times. At the least. other day, he he. It's never every time he loses all 93 times that he's lost. It's never. You know, I'm playing bad. He's the guy. The other day, he was screaming, blaming the controller. Yeah, it was broken. <laughs> he says that Madden's out to get him. It, it is. Yeah, well, that, that's serious. outrageous. But and, the and, controller and, is broken. You need new controllers. And bear down, it's you know it's, how I know it's serious. broken. Bear down. I was trying to sprint, and the guy's holding the ball, doing one of these, <laughs> like celebrating, and I was not holding the L2 button. That right there shows, and it happened multiple times. And all I said to him, and I did not blame, I, I said to him, I said, Bob, and I've said this, Bob, and if you're going to go on the podcast and deny this, and you're full of it, I said to him many times, you're a better player than me. There's no denying it. But the controller was not, it was not working. I've told him I brought it up while I was winning the game. I, I was couple, winning the game and I, I brought couple, it up. I have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, for, first question. Um, this is a PlayStation 5? No, it's a PlayStation 4. Okay. Uh, do you own a PlayStation 4 cuts? I do. Okay. So you both have access yep. to the same yes. system, right? Yep. Okay. Um, do you guys select the same teams all the time or is it no, a it's mandatory randomized. randomized team? Three randomized. If you don't like the three that you get, you could do you a get fourth, but you, death. you have to be yeah. that. It's team. a suicide. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, no. Those were my questions. I think that levels the playing fields. You know, if you were and to now, tell me that cuts isn't messing, you know, cuts has got an Xbox, not a PlayStation, no, no. He's or a doesn't have a player game than me. There's no right, doubt right. about it. He's a right. very good player. But, 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 better player. But, that being said, I'm not a fee, I'm not a Madden guy. I'm a FIFA, a FIFA guy. guy. I know, and yeah, I would like destroy FIFA. him to the same extent that he has in in Madden. I would destroy him. If Will he play you in FIFA? Will he? No, play sure. we played a we couple played streams FIFA before. We we played like maybe maybe 10 15 games i think he's never won once well i don't think i don't think bob's love for the sport of soccer is the he same as your, as the same FIFA. as your mutual love for the game of football that's true that is true and he doesn't see the field with fifa he doesn't have the patience he's got yeah, 80, the, the, the so he doesn't have the patience to, to to pass the ball it's a very poetic very rhythmic game in fifa so you don't just blast up and do a hail like a freaking post Fair down. when you you know when you think you got to you, you got to strategic your way when you think of joey colcuts do you think poetic do you in think FIFA, rhythm? i am i am poetic in fifa um, and when I think of Joey Cold Cuts, I think of what do you um, think of? Give me, give me, you know, here's what you do, Bear Down. When you think of Joey Cold Cuts, give, give yeah. through the three words that you think of when you think of Joey Cold Cuts. Because my first two are loud and aggressive. That's Un- unapologetic. Yep. Bingo. Unapologetic. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Passion, yeah. Passion, passionate. Yeah. Good oh, tour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, unique. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. No, that was really good. That was what about really, genuine. Really, that was really impressive. Well, I think passionate kind of encompasses genuine a little bit there. I mean, I think I think cuts is I think let, let me I'll say this. I think cuts is what you see is what you get. And there is absolutely no <laughs> where my there's heart no my fake, there is no faking the funk with this man. I will also me. say this is that Bear Dunn and I are very similar in many, many ways. <laughs> I'm not, and that's a fantastic the fact that I'm saying that is a fantastic compliment to the to the Mikey Villani camp. <laughs> That him and I are very, very similar in true to form. We're, we're the same age, which, by the way, Mikey V, you didn't realize I was older you know, than what I am. Did not know cuts was and it explains the, <laughs> it explains the wisdom that we have and the failure of Bob to see that wisdom. Oftentimes, the maturity level that it does not <laughs> encompass what we hold. <laughs> You're such a sick individual. Um, you know I did that? not know. I did not know Cuts was the age he was. I doesn't was that, very surprised. I was it very make, surprised. I'm, Bear down, I'm young it, at heart. Bear down. Knowing knowing that he's 35. Okay. And doesn't it make to you Takashi 69? That is slightly concerning. In my ear to the streets. But but don't you? <laughs> Oh, Doesn't it make you love him more to know that he's 35? Like uh, to me, it yes. makes him. I yeah. love him. I'm yeah. an 86 yeah. baby. Are you an 86? 86. Yep. Oh yeah. wow, I the 86 I, love. 86. I, I, do, I do just. I, I do want to just touch real before we move on. I do want to touch on the whole bear cave situation because I will say, and, and last week aside, okay, because you were dealing with a lot, had COVID. 
it, it, there is such a distinct difference on an NFL Sunday to where I don't even need to, Bear Down doesn't need to tell us where he is. Me and Cutty will text to the side and say, there's no way Bear Down's in the cave right now because we can feel there's a certain presence <laughs> in the group chat when Bear Down is upstairs in the living room compared to when he is in the Bear Cave. Cutsy, do you agree with that? I I agree 100%. Um, that being said, we haven't no, got one a lot of- no one carries us on a Sunday like Mikey Bear Down does, and it's not even close. Bob, the person who has the least involvement is by far you. Um, Bear, <laughs> I- Down, Bear Down is by far the most. But that being said, we do see two different sides of Bear Down when he is full cave mode and when he's not. That being said, the guy had COVID this week, and we still delivered a four-play flex win sure, on Christmas freaking day, man. I, I mean, I fucking, I went. I mean, what more? Gave, and we have people messaging in the group tonight uh, saying so we need sick. a pick. We we lost yesterday. It's like, come on, man. We I gave, we gave bro, a I Christmas gave, I, miracle. I did four for I, four. Besides the prize picks, I gave seven of seven on Christmas Day. So seven so of seven yeah, you delivered a Christmas, Christmas gift for the ages. Like, and and listen, there's people that are. I mean, you saw it because I, I, I repost a lot of them, like as many as I can. I, I don't see all of them, obviously, but I repost all the ones where people tag us. There's a lot of appreciative share. people. There is a lot of appreciative people for the same amount of appreciative people. There are There's the some scumbags amount. who just can't get enough. Even, and it, yeah, well, we're not, not a even, vending machine, by the way. Don't you don't know, just but, put a quarter in and yeah. pop out a winner. That's not I, how it works. I mean, here's the thing. It's like we're giving you these for free, right? Like we're not charging you a premium yet because huh. that is coming. That is coming, you know, because if you're very good at something, you don't do it for free. That's lesson number one in life, I think. Um, and it's not out of like, we'll still give away. I'll still give away like a free pick here and there. But I mean, it's just so exhausting. Like people don't get it, especially at this time in the NFL season when it's not even like we're just Sunday and Monday and Thursday anymore. I mean, we're Sunday. Tuesdays, Last week we were Sunday, Saturdays. Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Thursday. I mean, I mean it's Here, five days. It's people outrageous. don't realize too on bear down to, to your point that I, I got a full-time freaking job. You got yes. two kids and a yes. full-time job. Yes. I mean, yes. these, these things, Bob, they, you know, you, you, you kind of, you kind of skate free because you don't have any <laughs> pressure on you. Exactly they, weigh, they weigh heavily on your conscience to the point where like, if I have someone who I know you know is stringing together their pocket change they don't have a lot of money they're putting their money on our picks here's where it, here it hurts here, here's where i i gotta interject okay i am i want to win money okay of course. and i i want to let me finish i want to win money okay and i knew going into this prize picks was going to start me with a thousand dollars and i said you know what if i take these picks and put these picks out there's no way I'm going to have that money by the end of the season. I'm going to have the late night chase. I'm going to wonder this, one of this. What do I do? I call in Mikey V and I thought I was very smart about it. And I let Mikey V take over. And right now in our prize picks account, we have over $10,000 and they're in, they're putting in an additional $2,000. We get a thousand dollars every month. So I actually think that it's a very tactical move of me and I'll actually turn it on over to you, Joseph. Okay. And Bear Down has agreed that I think Cold Cuts has been very good outside of the Alvin Kamara pick that he gave us tonight. Um, I think Cold Cuts has been very good without question. And he went on a heater. However, He has cooled down a little bit. And I want to ask you this, Mikey V. He's not, he's by by no means is he cold, but he's not on the heater that he was. Nobody expects him for four. Joseph, can can, can I can I finish, Joseph? Can I please, please finish here? Okay. You've cooled down a little bit. You've been hot still, but cool down a little bit. That's okay. But what concerns me very much so, Mikey V. You yeah. now have his assisted over to him and alley ooped an NBA insider to him. Okay. So he's got Jerry Don's picks that he's going with. We have a separate group chat where he takes side games as well. We discussed this a little bit last week. He takes your prize picks as well. And now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you get a text message of Cutsy asking you for the NBA insiders' prize picks. Picks. I think. This man has way too much going on, and it concerns me about picks moving forward. Bear down, I'll give you the floor there. I think um, I think anytime you look at a slate and it's a big slate, and that's why a lot of people struggle. Um, now, see, some people will tell you that they do better college football Saturday. A lot of people struggle co- college football Saturday because it's such an overwhelming slate of games. 
And that's why, honestly, in my history of betting also, I've done better NFL late window slates, uh, the late game slates, because the slate is consolidated. It's smaller. You're only looking at two or three games. When you start looking at six, seven games, it, it gets a little overwhelming. I don't think Cuts is on a cooler, per se, whatsoever. No, I'm, and I'm not that, saying he's on a cooler I think cooler Cuts either. was hitting at such a high rate in the very beginning. And I, and like I said, it's it's ride the wave when it's happening because it will never last to that rate. It just won't. The odds are it just it just never does. It'll never last like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, Cuts loves action. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's not there's not a lot of guys that love action as much as Cuts. But, Bob, to be fair, I mean, the three of us love action. Let's we do. Let's, we let's do. be fair. Let's be fair. Bob, man. when you say it cooled off, I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade here. The, the week and a half, I went perfect, all right? I was six or seven of seven. So, yeah, cool off a little bit. You know, I miss a pick here or there. But we're still hitting at will. We're still turning get, out at least once a week. We're hitting out a winner. I've given you At least once a week. I've and, given and, you credit and, and, Bob, I will say this. I, my, the, the overall slate has cooled down completely from me because all I'm getting going on is Jerry Don's picks, and then the prize picks is, is the only other thing. Now – Alex Brown wants to give us an NBA insider. He's been hot. Wow, he just blew the cover of the NBA <laughs> insider. Something you don't you don't blow the cover. I'm of giving the, the man insider. some just do deserve. No, but and, and, and giving him a little bit of congratulations because he hit me three straight winners, Bob. The guy's been hot. I don't but bear down. He just he blew the M- knowledge for no, that. No, he just knowing, <laughs> knowing Alex very well, full well. There's Alex. Would not be upset with. Uh, He'd be thrilled with it you, because you, you know what? Don't blow the inside. You, you gotta you just call don't... a winner a winner, and yeah, that man is a winner he's on very, all on all counts. He's very he's very up. I will say this though, Baird. On the shocking thing is the only game, the only thing I lost on him was when he chose football. The guy's better at basketball than the sport he played. He's very wow. good at the NBA. Compliments, the NBA. compliments, and very then takes a dig at, at our very, very own Bear Down's very own. I, I mean, couldn't you just left it at the compliment, Joseph? No. No, no, he, he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. Because <laughs> what are the three words? What are the three words again? Bear down to describe uh, passion, Joey Kulka. I would like. Oh, let, let, let me get. Let me hear. I want to hear. Go ahead. Bear down. What passionate, were the three words? passionate, unique, and um, unforgiving was, or uh, unforgiving was the one. Was it no. unforgiving? No, no, it, no, no, no. It was unforgiving. unforgiving. Um, passionate. It was definitely passionate. It was definitely uh, unique. <laughs> unique and it was, was the last what one. Was, what the hell unforgiving or. Um, yeah, un- unapologetic. Un- unapologetic. 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 And folks, I want to let you know um, <laughs> we have a phenomenal top five coming. We're not going to lift it out right now because I still want the banter to keep going because I'm enjoying this. I'm having a good time here. Um, but we got a great top five coming. It's going to be the top five songs of all time uh, coming at the end of the show that very much looking forward to. Joseph, something that I want to bring to your attention, Bear Down, I wanted to send it to Bear Down tonight. Um, but I don't think he has Jack in the Box on the East Coast. There's a oh, new chicken sandwich in town. Really? There is oh a new God. chicken sandwich in town. Uh, really? Jack in the Box has released a new chicken sandwich, and I will tell you, of course, the commercials always look good. Yeah. This looks like a special chicken sandwich. Have you tried it? it? No, I have not. No, okay. I have not. So I, Cutsy's not in L.A. right now. I'm not in L.A., but I think when we get back, a, a review needs to take place. Jack had, Jack in the Box hasn't been in the tabloids since they gave somebody E. coli like 15 years ago <laughs> and someone did, someone died eating their the sandwich. Tabloids. The problem that Jack in the Box has is they have way too many things on the menu. Oh, You know, big, big, big uh, supporter of Jack in the Box is that uh, fluffy guy that you interviewed, Bob. Yeah, uh, Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah, he said it's his top spot. Man, uh, it's, it's crazy. Food, but that yeah. was a terrible pick. It's crazy. They just got they got way too many things the going on with them. In a, the you, always gotta, you always got to worry about um, a place with 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 an overwhelming amount of stuff on the menu like that. Uh, yeah. The only place I want to see an overwhelming well, cheesecake menu factory is, is. Yeah. Yeah. I think cheesecake gets too much praise, man. I, I don't. Uh, oh, Bob, we've been there before. You loved it. I, that That's not true. I got those little lettuce wraps that were really subpar, to be quite frank. We you went on the one it. on Beverly a couple of years ago. And you the said Asian, it was great. the chicken, Asian lettuce wrap. Appetizer. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. what? when you have these yeah. menus that are that big with so, with so many different things, 
I will say, Joe, when it comes to restaurants, Joe goes to sees a menu. He he always orders the right thing, and then I get something, and I and and I hate that I get. He you know, does. We, we went to we went to Scottsdale. Okay, we mm. went to Red Lobster. Okay, Red Lobster. Well, mm. just just listen to me, okay? So so Bob orders some subpar shrimp scampi dish that turned out to be dog oh, shit. Terrible. I ordered the full two and a half pound lobster. It's hard to fuck up a lobster. So they broil it, they bring it out with hot melted butter. This guy was salivating like a cocker spaniel in the seat across from me, just begging for scraps. And and you know what? He's he's good (laughs) about, he. what I like about cutting the same thing, he shares. I like to share. I like people to try what I have. I I really do. Um, I just think it helps enhances the experience. What he did though at Red Lobster that made me sick to my stomach, sick to my stomach, you walk in the Red Lobster. They got the tank with all the lobsters. Yeah. We go, we sit down. Mind you, it's it's we had just gotten in from the airport. It's late. They're getting ready to close down. He asked the waitress if he could pick out the lobster that he was going to eat. Uh-huh. So the waitress took yeah. us to the front. Tank to table. Lobby, tank to table. <laughs> 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 took us to the front and, and he got to pick out. She had to go and scrape out the lobsters. And he, he wanted to pick what lobster he was going to be. I picked a feisty devoted. little bastard. <laughs> Tank the table. I mean, is that <laughs> sick, though? At Red Lobster, this was? Yeah. 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 I mean, I didn't even know Red Lobster would allow such things. You know, they another did. thing that, that I do want to uh, touch on as well, which was hysterical to me, Mikey V went on a rant about how great haagen was and Klondike got brought up. And then Klondike sends him the package. What, and then he this? had what to get this? all revved up and amped up for Klondike as if they're actually competing with Hagen right Dazs. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and then this is this is this is weeks and, old. And, is, and, yeah, and then you watch the live and you know that he doesn't. Meanwhile, they sent it. Jerry Don a whole package. He didn't do anything for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, he, put, he posted something, I think. Well, Did he? I, I don't know. Something yeah, that I do something. do want to take, and then we can go into our top five, which just, <laughs> which just sickens me, okay? Mikey V has a real good thing going with Klondike, and the approach that I took was I that good, but... that is what he will <laughs> and they sent you stacks and stacks. <laughs> they sent you a sweater, yeah, one of one. But that's, like... that's where it ends. I mean, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like Klondike's, oh, I think like, it's, I think it's not like Klondike's bankrolling. Uh, <laughs> Bear, Bear, <laughs> Bear Down was hoping for more, but it didn't happen. Uh, not necessarily. I thought you deserve nice... more. I but thought it was a nice gesture by Klondike. Your I live, think. by the way, was spectacular. Go, go ahead, go ahead, though, Bear Down. No, I think that they I think they went above and beyond. I never expected them to send anything. And as far as Hagen Dazs is concerned, <laughs> Hagen Dazs feels no need to do anything because they know clearly that they're a superior brand of ice cream. Uh, but the, the question really wasn't comparing Hagen Dazs to, to Klondike in terms of the ice cream. It was a comparison of the bar itself, the square bar. And Klondike is still uh comfortably i think the, the kiln of no they're the king of that realm the the, the square ice cream bar i think the handheld no stick <laughs> ice cream bar like just i think they're the king of that realm they understand that but haagen does in terms of quality of ice cream i mean it's <laughs> night and day yeah i mean there's just i mean haagen does makes a good ice now, cream. bear down but, on the but, side note bob i want to tell him something i know he's a big peppermint guy you need to try the Ghirardelli or whatever it's called, the, the special chocolate. Yep, Their peppermint bark bear down is phenomenal, dude. What, ice cream or just? No, yeah. just the peppermint bark. And you yeah. would go nuts for this shit. I had yeah. it over Christmas break. I couldn't stop eating it. Yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of mint products in the house as of. Uh, I want Christmas. a top five mint mint breakdown. But can I can I say what really just sickens me? Just sickens what? me. And look, maybe nothing was going to happen out of the Klondike thing. Maybe, oh, maybe nothing was going to in the pot again. <laughs> maybe, no, maybe nothing was going to come from the Klondike thing. But, but it it it, it, con- it concerns me. It concerns me for future endeavors. 
<laughs> is that Klondike reached out to Bear Down Cuz, and that was Bear Down Cuz's thing. That was his thing, and him and Klondike could have had what something. It was, it was a thing, wonderful huh? moment. It was a good moment, Bear Down. <laughs> it was a good. It, was a it good, didn't last long, but it was it a was, wonderful moment. But, but what was what, I supposed to do? Parlay the Klondike relationship? Like, what are they gonna? What, what, they well, put it but, out there for you. But what sickens me is that yeah. they they reached out, and it seemed like you guys had a really good thing going, you and Klondike. We and what is Joe? Thing We're out you did. Home. What does Joey Cold Cuts do? Cuts he feels that <laughs> he needs to be involved and he wants if Klondike's sending something to bear down, well, why aren't they sending something to cuts? What does cuts no. do? What does cuts do? He DMs Klondike <laughs> and said, Hey, I saw you guys send a package to bear down. Did it's a shame you forgot about me? It was not just bear down, it was to everyone and their mother. Don then, got a pa- package. Alex Brown got a package. You got a package. Uh, I mean, it was like Oprah. You get a package. You got a package. And I'm sitting there that, saying, where's my package? And I'm an integral part of the show. And I don't get a package. I don't even get it so much. So I messaged them and they said, oh, this is the first time we're hearing from you. Oh, it was so Bob, did you get everything? I didn't ask. They, they messaged me. I didn't yeah, ask. They were going to send him a package. It, but I, I didn't respond because that, that was your thing. You could have given my address, Bob. I would have gladly. That was your thing. <laughs> that was your thing. I, I didn't want that to message me. And, and had Hagen Dazs DM me again, total different ball game. But, but yeah, Hagen Dazs is not doing that. They don't feel the need. Nope, they don't. But that was Bear Down's thing. And here's Cutsy. He's got to get involved. And he DMs them. As if, you know, what about me? And then when you said, oh, they sent something to Jerry, you claim that th- that Cutsy, they thought that you were Jerry. And it happens felt, all the time. And you felt that Klondike sent the package to the wrong person, that they meant to send it to you yes. and not Jerry Don is what you feel. Yes. <laughs> Bear down. Your, I'll, I'll, you got the floor. Bear it down. That, that, this all happens yours. all the time, Bob. I get mistaken all the time. I think uh, so. But Klondike responded to you, didn't they, Joe? After I DM them, yeah. And what happened? You want me to read the DM? No, not really. Bob, am no. I not reading this? Just, just oh. your initial message to them because it's so cringeworthy. I'll read it. it wasn't It wasn't cringeworthy. I said, oh, yeah. Was, I said, not going to lie, pretty disappointed that everyone <laughs> on the podcast got love from Klondike except for me. <laughs> yeah. And they wrote, Joey, this is the first DM we got from you. Nice to meet you. With, like a heart emotion. <laughs> And I said, I've heard great things from you guys through our. Here's what I do, Bob. Okay. So I tried sick. To... You know what I do? Bear down here. This is a testament. I'm not going to lie. This is me reading it 100%. You can see this. Yeah, I, see I did I see. not take the liberty just to make it about me. I said, I've heard great things from you guys <laughs> through our good friend at Bear Down Cuz. And I tagged you. <laughs> and I said, We had a big topic section d- d- dedicated to you on the podcast that came out today. So I highly suggest sick. you give it a lesson. So, Bob, let this be a notion to you. I A, promoted the podcast, <laughs> and B, I promoted Mikey Bear Down Cuz in a support to help him get a you, you know a sponsorship, you, which they didn't come through for. You, so, you know what? Quite frankly, it was never Klondike. You promoted the brilliantly dumb show to Klondike. So yes. I should be thanking you. And yes. Saying, hey, I'm, I'm going out. I'm doing the Lord's what work. I think you I'm made like John f- the Baptist here proclaiming the good word for 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 the brilliantly dumb show here Gentlemen. and i'm trying to support my good friend mikey v to get a sponsorship and quite frankly they didn't come through so it was never klondike it, that supporting mikey v to get a sponsorship by I asking I, to get I, free, I, free I, sandwiches I, 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 there was no you. word about free sandwiches i said that i heard about you from my good friend mikey beard on because he's been spending a lot of good words about you <laughs> I, I, Gentlemen, before we head over to our top five, do we have anything that we would like to get off our? Is there anything you guys would like to say? Is there something that I'm missing before we get into what I think will be a very interesting top five? I want to say one last thing. Oh, here we go. And then this, I want a genuine answer and response from both of you because I'm getting very excited. The Green Bay Packers are poised to win the Super Bowl this year, and I want to know your gentlemen's thoughts on it. If you think that this is an outrageous take by Cutsy, please tell me. But I, I just know. don't see any team aside from maybe Tom Brady giving us a, a run for our money. But this you year. just you want to hear us say it over and over and over because both I think Bear Down too. I think I can speak for Bear Down. I've said they're 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 right now they're the number one team in the NFL. The NFC is going to be brutal. It's going to be a bloodbath in the playoffs. But if Green Bay gets that one seed the way that it looks like they're going to get. They'll get Lambeau Field throughout the entire playoffs. 
then as of right now, without question, they are the favorite, I would say, to to win the Super Bowl right now. But again, it's, it's going to be a brutal, brutal path to get there. Bear yeah. down. Um, I don't know what, what is going on with Aaron Rodgers. Something is going on with Aaron Rodgers. You know, now he's, now he's, everything is, everything is coming up daisies and roses about him being in Green Bay. And he's so appreciative of the yep. Packers and he loves the Packers. Yep. And he's you know, so happy he's there and he's never mm-hmm. been happier. And, you know, the whole song and the dance. So he is either the greatest bullshit artist of all time or, or, he I just completely, him. completely duped the entire country, which I think he's been doing his entire career. Not I mean, he he absolutely Joe, am I going to be able to get answer to fucking it's question? unbelievable? Or, it's, or are it's, you going to fucking it's, it's are you gonna do that the entire man? <laughs> All right. So listen, so I think that Rogers is now in a position where he is he is just such a lover of controversy. He is such a lover of drama. It makes me so sick. But at the same time, like I've said over and over and over, this man plays the position of quarterback better than 99% of every quarterback ever. The only guys I could say that really I've ever seen play the position of quarterback in their primes that I would take over him or consider taking over is Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Those are the only two guys that I could say in, in my mind that I would take over him playing the position. That's it. So to me, it all comes down to one thing and one thing only. Can they get over the NFC championship hump? And will it be against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Because Tampa Bay, now they're going to lose some heavy offensive artillery. uh, Fournette's hurt. uh, Godwin's out for the year with the torn ACL. Evans is hurt. Um, So I think Tampa Bay's banged up. So I think that's going to affect them. But I think Tampa Bay's defense is very, very dangerous. And I just can't count Tom Brady out yet, but that's the hump they have to get over. But that's it. Down. I with, think with that's the game. That's my the only game thing with my only thing with the Rodgers thing is, it's easy to be happy when you're playing this well. You're the yeah. favorite to be the MVP, same way that it was last year. But I'll say this: if they do lose a game in the playoffs and they don't get to the Super Bowl, if you don't think the exact same thing, song and dance is going to come yeah, in the off season. This is, no. this is what it's easy to be all high spirits when they're good. If they lose in the playoffs, it'll be right back to it. And it'll be right back to the rumor mill. Where's he going to go? Is he leaving green Bay? And I think the way you say it all the time, which is true, he craves um, that drama, but, Cutsy again. I, I do think they are the favorites to Cuts is walking Bowl. Cuts is walking a fine line right now, and he knows it. Cuts, yeah, you could deny it all you want. You know you're walking a fine line right now because you know, you know deep down this is it. This is it. This is the season. If they can't do it this season, I understand they're banged up, but you can't use that as an excuse anymore because at this point in the season between COVID and injuries, every team in the NFL is decimated. Yeah. Every team in the NFL is decimated at this point. They are walking the line where this is it for them and him. They have to do it this year. He still has the best wide receiver in football by laws. He still has one of the top running backs in all of football. The defense is playing very, very well. Perhaps they get uh, Alexander back. Perhaps they get Zadarius Smith back. This is it for them. This is it. It has to be done. If they there win, are no bear more down, it's, it's your worst nightmare because now, they will be let me tell you something, Joe, I'll put my, uh, Joe, I'll put my head on the pillow just like this and go right to sleep. It will not be my, it's not going to be my worst nightmare. Rogers will not leave if they win the Super Bowl. And I then, pro- I, how about this? I'll put it, I'll put the, there is no way I will be nearly as upset, nearly as upset if Green Bay wins the Super Bowl as I was when Michigan beat Ohio State. Not even close. No. Not even, not even an iota within close, not even close. Not even as close to as devastated as when that happened. So if the Packers make the Super Bowl, you'll root for Cutsy? No. I well no no well actually probably yes because I'll probably have money on Green Bay so probably yes cuts so probably I will be rooting for you I I think I'm in big trouble here I think I'm in oh, very big no. trouble right now what did he um, why I'm getting ready to move on over to our top five and this is a crucial this is a big top five it's a very tough top five I wrote it down and I can't find oh. where I wrote my top five down. The list that was the hands down greatest oh. list. And if anybody it was, if it anybody was courtesy of rollingstones.com. It was. <laughs> 
undoubtedly, I think, an incredible oh. list. Well, um, if it's that good, you should remember the list. I know. I, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do, gentlemen. It's go time. This is the top five, the Ask Bob, Ask Bear Down, Ask Joey Cold Cut segment. Um, we are going to be doing the top five best songs of all time. And I'll tell you who we're not going to start with is me. Um, we are going to start with Mikey Bear Down Cuz, who's going to be getting us going. Um, Bear Down, this is a big one. Top five songs of all time. Wow. So we're going right now. Listen, this is such a subjective top five. It really is. I mean, it's 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 a dependence of taste. It's a dependence of are we going with just our personal favorite songs ever? Because that's a little outrageous, I think, and selfish to do for the top five. If you're just going to go with what you like. I mean, there's things that I like. What mood are you in? It's, top five most significant songs ever written top five best songs ever written in terms of their importance to society in terms of their importance and impact on the musical industry that's the way i am i am quarterbacking this top five list okay so yeah. number five we're gonna start what is there a problem with that i'm excited for your list yeah I I, i'm very i thought bob was this. gonna interject okay no problem i'm very excited um, for this okay number five for me number five Let's start off with Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses. Now, when that song comes on, that guitar solo right off the beginning, that song is an incredible song, uh, a very influential song, I think, on the structure of which a lot of songs are written after. Sweet Child of Mine checks in at number five. Number four. Number four, I am going to go with What's Going On, Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Oh, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Very, very significant song. Time frame, 1971. Country in a lot of turmoil. Vietnam War. A lot of things going on there. Late 60s, early 70s. That song, extremely important song. That song you turn on today. That's still an incredible song. Influential song. What's going on? Marvin Gaye, number four. Number three. Rolling Stones can't get no satisfaction. Oh, that's a good song. Nah, 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 that's nah. a very good song. You hear that song? Come on. That <laughs> song is an absolute iconic guitar riff, iconic entry. Great song has to be there. Number three, can't get no satisfaction. Uh, Rolling Stones. Number two, I am going to go with Stairway to Heaven. Led Zeppelin, wow. Stairway to wow. Heaven is the number wow. two song for me. Um, I don't think that you could you'd be hard pressed to find a song that's more impressive the way the song is built and everything like that. And then the number one song to me. And yes, this is slightly a homer pick and I won't deny that. Brace yourself um, it, here, Joseph. It, it, it is. It is a slight homer pick, but I do believe that if you ever wanted a motivational song and a song that just could be played at pretty much any occasion at any time to get the blood flowing, it would be My Way by Francis Albert Sinatra. Francis Albert Sinatra, My Way is just an iconic song. Um, you know, but through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. Play it during any song. Play it to motivate yourself. Play it to do whatever you got to do. My Way, Frank Sinatra. That is my top five, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I'll, I for I'll, once don't have any interjections. I think yeah, it's a I don't good either. List. I don't either. Um, Frank Sinatra is phenomenal. I I think what what's really going to be interesting is what what do we play for the sixth one? Is it honorable mention? Honorable mention. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable mention for the sixth one. I think will be crucial. Um, I I don't from from me. Uh, I I don't have any issue with that. Maybe what's going on doesn't really get me going, but I get that. I think it's a signature song. I think it's, I I got no issue with that. Um, We will do myself and then we will head on over to Giuseppe. Um, Number five for me, um, I'm going my way, Frank Sinatra. I think it's an incredible song. I I love it. Uh, Yeah. I just think that that is to me, um, is an absolute no brainer. Um, number four, I am actually going to go with imagine John Lennon bear down. You guessed prior in the gambler's digest that I would have this in my top five iconic song. Imagine John Lennon, no brainer. Um, I, by the way, I love my honorable mention as well. I love all six of what I'm about to rattle off right here. Um, number three, I am going with stairway to heaven. Um, right there with you, Mikey V. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable song. Led Zeppelin. I think that is a no-brainer. Um, number two, 
I'm going with Bohemian Rhapsody, Queen. Um, unlike just about any other song out there, um, highs and lows takes you through an emotional roller coaster. Uh, it's poetry. It's it's unbelievable. And then number one, which is my number one favorite artist, the only concert that I've ever been to, Billy I think Joel. the only guy that I will go to, um, Piano Man, Billy Joel, for me. Um, book it. That's a book job right there. Gentlemen, do we have any issues here? No, I've seen Billy Joel at the Garden. Love Billy Joel. The best. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't have any objections with it. I don't know. I here's my thing: is that a Queen song is my, my honorable mention, and but I was toying with Bohemian Rhapsody, but I just think there's a Queen song out there that doesn't get the respect Bells? that Bohemian. What? <laughs> it's ACDC, you struns. <laughs> what the fuck? What you... <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> yes, Hell's Bells by. Uh, That's a good song, Queen. though. Yeah, 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 about it's just great ruining song. the flow of a. No, no, no it's fine. But I, I, there's a Queen song that's so underappreciated. I'll get to it when I do my honorable mention. I think it's as good, if not better, than Bohemian Rhapsody. But I understand why Bohemian Rhapsody is up there. I do, I do get it. I get. Yeah, that. I just think it's I so unlike any other song. The way it is that unlike goes. That's a lot of Queen. Gets... A lot of Queen stuff is unlike a lot of a lot of things. So it's funny. Yes, Queen is my honorable mention. So all right, that. Mikey B, can we get a little bit of a drum roll, please? Here, Joseph Demar, Giuseppe, Peter Demar, Vancouver, so, British Columbia. <laughs> take it away here. So here's here's my thing. Okay, it's it's a good question, but it's very general. It's very vague. It's very open to interpretation. Um, so my thought process is this, is it's very hard to just pick out five songs that are the best of all time. So I thought, how do I break this down? Okay, so I've gone about it a lot differently than both you and Bear Down have. And I've segmented five songs that I think are top in their category. For segmented? Segmented. Oh, segmented. Sorry, my connection. Segmented five songs in their own genres that I think are standalone top of their category. And that's how I'm going to based on this question. Okay. So I have segmented oh, 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 this. Can, can I just interject to it, uh, real quick? Bear down, are you okay with that? I mean, I think what he's going to say is he's going to, I'm going to give you the best rock and roll song of all time. The best yep. hip hop song of all yes, time. I that's am. how he wants to play it. The, that's fine. That's I, fine. I think that that's the, the only, best way to go about it. The, okay. But the only issue that I will say, and, and if you could do the five to one, but the only issue I will say is when the graphic comes out from Fossbender, don't, don't be upset if people don't agree with you because you win a different route. This is the route that you're choosing for your top five songs. That was the question. I'm just making sure that you know that. I You're just think that based on the way that I'm looking at it, I think it's the best way to break down this question is to look at five different genres. I give each of the genres their due deserve. Okay. So what's I think the Down actually the did a good job of getting getting some versatility in there, Bob. Yours was very unversatile. It was very, very narrow in the sense of it was one style. But one genre basically to me those are my those are my top well you know what songs. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a different route here okay so can i ask you a question what are the five genres if i had a guess i would guess rock rock and roll is obviously one hip-hop yeah. is is one obviously right yes. hip-hop pop i would guess that i would guess that pop okay general pop i would say that i would say and listen I, maybe i'm wrong but i would say like dance music perhaps something along the, the lines of dance disco something like that i or, got a again, classic rock and i got a country as well in there oh boy i got all right. five all right take it away and if you want me to go five to one i'll no, do it, take it I, I, they all I think, stand i just think that r&b and jazz should have do you want gotten a, do but, you okay, want go him to go five to one as, as put him in order bear down yeah. Well, likes. actually, I guess it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. But if you want to do it for the sake of fast, better, right. I mean, go ahead. All right. We'll start with country. OK, is that five. Yeah, this is five country. Okay. I think one name in country and I love country music. I think of the legend himself. I think Johnny Cash. I think this man is electric. I think he was revolutionary. Johnny Cash, Walk the Line, whether you're a country fanatic or not, is a phenomenal song. The guy had flair, he had style. That is my country top song of all time. I think it's, it's a great song. It's incredible. Number four, all right, we're going to go to rock music, all right? This is a song that I think 
is 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 uh, something that is more known in the 90s but i think you can play it at any time in any era and people will appreciate it i'm not a big rock guy but this song slaps and that's nirvana smells like teen spirit that song is something special kurt cobain i don't know how high he was when he made that song but that song slaps <laughs> Bob, you love that song. I know you do. Go ahead. I'm listening to the list. I'm listening to the list. This next song I'm going to get a lot of heat for. Um, I'm just saying it right now. I know Bear Down is going to absolutely destroy me for, but I just look at it. It's a pop song. And I look at how much money, buzz, and, and how this song has changed pop music for forever. And the amount of money it's generated, the amount. When I think pop... I think Britney Spears, and I think one more time, it is unprecedentedly phenomenal. As she is the biggest thing in music, Bob. She's still to this day, she doesn't put music out. This conservative ship is bigger than anything as, around. As the number, uh, number three, as, number three, number three. Uh, I, I, again, I broke it down to seven. Okay, all right, okay, five all right, to, to one. All right, okay. But Bear Down said it best. It's not just the song itself. It's what the song has done for the industry. Are you okay, Bear Down? First off, when did Bear Down say that? Before, when you weren't paying attention, before he gave his picks, he gave a very okay. profound sentence. All right, all right, keep it rolling here. Bear Down, what, are you against that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Joe. I don't know. Britney Spears? Oh, no, this I mean, is just I, grueling, I, man. I, I, Let's see. I want to hear the rest of the list. I yeah, want to hear the rest please. of the list. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Number yeah. two is hip hop. Okay. Yep. This song is it's everything. Let's all right. It. This song is fucking everything that you could ever want in a hip hop song. Two of the biggest icons in the industry to this day. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, still DRE. It is an incredible song. And it is to me the best song that hip hop has ever produced by far. Okay. No, you don't like it, but that's 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 still DRE, okay? And then number one is classic. It's Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's a ballad, it's poetry, as Bob said. It's 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 different than any style song you'll ever hear. That is that is that is it. Now, you know, if you look at it from five to one, you guys can can rip me on it, but I broke it down in a different way. And you know what? Quite frankly, I'm not I'm not here for a popularity contest anymore. I'm sick and tired of, of reading the comments of what people say. This to me is my top list, and I, you can't convince me otherwise. Okay, uh, there you have it. Um, very, very. Um, to me, when he was doing the list, bear down. What I thought of are the three words that you used to describe Joey Colcutt. What are those three words? Unapologetic, passionate. <laughs> And uh, and unique, certainly, <laughs> unique. certainly, unique. ladies and gentlemen, that does it. Nice, well, long... honorable mentions. Uh, oh Bob. yes, yeah. uh, honorable mention. If Cutsy can find another genre, um, um, honorable mention. I'll go with um, Frank Sinatra, you know, New York, New York. All right. Well, Bear Down's gonna have no issue with that. Bear Down's gonna have no issue with anything Frank Sinatra. Bear Down, your honorable <laughs> well, mention. That's is... not necessarily true, but okay. Well, so my <laughs> I did say that Queen was uh, my honorable mention, my favorite Queen song of all time, and I don't think it gets nearly, nearly the recognition that it deserves. And it's not just Queen; it's Queen with David Bowie, "Under Pressure." No, under I, pressure. I love that. Under pressure is such an under. Speaking of under, underappreciated song, man. Like as soon as that, and you know, it's a shame that Vanilla Ice had to bite the 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 rhythmic uh, whatever to beat off of that song with the dun 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 dun. I mean, there is just that song is is phenomenal. I love I I love that play. Even when you said Queen, I was trying to think about it, and it goes to show you how underappreciated it is. Under pressure did not come up in my head. Yeah, I love that. I actually, for honorable mention, will go American. Pie, Don McLean, Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Um, everybody sings to that. Everybody loves that song. I think it's incredible. Another one that I love, Sweet but Caroline's I can't, another good one. I was gonna say I I love it, but it's a Red Sox song. They have taken that song, and I uh, can't put it in. Is what's that? That's not over here. That's Bob. We got coyotes. There's coyotes. Jesus. Wow. Yep. You hear that? 
Those oh, yeah. are the, they got coyotes it's circling. Mating the golf season, course. mating season in June. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, that is a perfect time to close oh, things down, Lord. fellas. I appreciate you. Well, what was the other one, Bob? Was it Sweet Caroline? It was Sweet Caroline. I, Sweet Caroline, such a great. Oh, that song. wasn't okay. Yeah, I thought but you were still Sox like the song. It doesn't yeah, have to be Red the, Sox the, related. The, it is though. It is. They've taken that. So they've hijacked that song for me. I can't enjoy it as much. I really can't. I really can't. Um, folks, that does it. Bear down. We appreciate you. As always, he is back better than ever. We love to see it. That is the straw that stirs the drink there for us. Uh, Joey Coldcuts, as always, unapologetic. And the other two things, we love you. We appreciate Unique you. Unique and passionate, Bob. Unique and passionate. <laughs> we guys, love you, memory boys. Memory like a goldfish. <laughs> we love you. We appreciate you. That's another edition of the Brilliant Up Show.